your day job was as probably as far away from being a cook as I think you could get. I had a good civilian day job, that's true. I was the fiction editor of The New Yorker, weekly magazine. Obviously you liked food, but how do you go from there to saying, hey Mario, I want to work in your kitchen? That was an accident, and what happened next was an accident, and what happened after that was an accident, in the, in the sense that it wasn't intended. Um, and the book, the, yeah, the book is a little bit of a bizarre book. Maybe it's a couple books in one, but it's what it's what it's representing is um, an experience that maybe got a little out of control. And <laughs> it, it 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 is uh, it, it is that account of getting of. Uh, of discovering that I wanted to know something and wanting to find out more and find out more and find out more and find out more and find out more until finally I realized, damn, I better, I better stop. I've, I've got to stop and, you know, for a start, we've run out of money. And um, I, my, I'm with my long suffering wife in this hill town in Italy, and I, I guess I better, get, I better get back to New York and start writing this book. But it started when I met um, Mario Batali at a dinner, and then, in fact, I invited her out of my apartment for dinner, and then, uh, mentioned the experience to David Remnick, the editor of The New Yorker, and proposed that someone should write a profile of this man, and in the end, David proposed that I write it, and I thought, well, I'll write it if I can go into the kitchen, and once I got into the kitchen, uh, I then entered a world that I I just kept wanting to know more about. For people who don't know Mario, tell me about who he is, and what he is, and where he came from. Um, he's a chef that came to prominence in the United States, really through the Food Network, and he got onto the Food Network by uh, the cooking that he was doing a little restaurant called Poe. Uh, Poe was the restaurant that he opened after being something of a very accomplished chef in California and realizing that he was doing too many drugs, spending way too much money, uh, getting uh, very little sleep, and uh, heading, heading probably towards death uh, when he quit his job and uh, went to Italy and worked for nothing learning how to make pasta in the mountains in a little village above Bologna. Um, Poe uh, led to Babo, a restaurant that he opened up with Joe Bastianich, the son of Lydia Bastianich, another television cooking personality. And that, combined with his Food Network success, meant that he, was, he became a very prominent chef. He's the most, he, he's sort of the most voracious, ab advocate of appetite and excess I have ever met in my life by a factor of many. Uh, I've never met anyone like him in my life, and he was the man I first apprenticed myself to. So, I mean, that could have just been the book. That would have probably been enough. That was meant to be the book. In fact, uh, I, before I went back, after I wrote a piece for The New Yorker, and then that experience made me feel that there was a book here, and I went back into the kitchen. When I went back into the kitchen, I got a contract with my book publisher, and that was going to be the book. It was going to be 60,000 words, uh, due on May 2003, little book, published probably for Christmas 2003. Um, Cooking with Mario or something sweet. Here we are three years later, and uh, the book is just coming out, and it's true. That should have probably just been the book, but by then, um, I was starting to cross over without realizing that I was crossing over. When you're in, a, in the Babo kitchen, like in any kitchen where you're doing Italian cooking or French cooking in a place which isn't Italy or France, or Japanese cooking in a place that isn't Japan, and you're trying to learn that cooking, there is a, a basic assumption that you can only learn so much if your objective is to learn. And a lot of the people in the Babo kitchen were there to learn, and they were doing their stint. It might be one year, two years, three years, to learn what they could in the kitchen, but they all recognized that at some point they needed to go to Italy. That was what Mario did, uh, that's where he learned whatever it is that you learn in Italy, a philosophy or a touch or a, a way of making food that isn't made here. And um, and I, I thought, okay, well I've, I've, done the, I've done this kitchen gig and I you know finally became a line cook and I kind of held my own. Uh, and I I need to do the next next thing, I thought, well I'll, I'll, I'll go to Italy for two weeks. Uh, I'll, go, you know, I'll do the journalistic thing. I'll go a little bit like the embedded journalist, and I'll get a, the flavor and the, the flair and the atmosphere, and I'll have an ending and I'll wrap it up and turn my book in. It'll be a little bit late, but you know it'll be it'll be okay. Uh, I went there for two weeks, and uh, I ended up uh, um, in, in a butcher shop in Tuscany, uh, one of Italy's well, Italy's most famous butcher. 
given that most countries don't have famous butchers, it's, it's quite possible that he's the most famous butcher in the world. Uh, a outsized, gigantic personality of a guy who believes in authentic Tuscan meat and that the heart of all cooking was when the Medicis were running the kitchens in Renaissance Italy and uh, at the slightest provocation will start reciting Dante's Inferno, uh, the entire Inferno, if you don't stop him, uh, standing on a, his um, kind of, uh, it's not a podium, but it's his, it's his sort of his, his, where he, you know, does his butchering. I was there for two weeks, and uh, at the end of two weeks, I thought, "Wow, uh, this 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 is an amazing this is amazing." And I had to go back. There was a my mother and stepfather were having a 70th birthday, and I was going back to host a birthday party for them. Uh, and uh, right afterwards, I thought, "I got to go back to Italy," and went back and stayed for six months, and then came back uh, like uh, half a year later and did a couple more months. And uh, by then, I realized I was. I was gone. The book is Heat, an amateur's adventures as kitchen slave, line cook, pasta maker, and apprentice to a Dante quoting butcher in Tuscany. I've been speaking with the author, and can we call you a cook now? I think you probably can. Bill Buford and Heat is published by Doubleday Canada.